My name is Ajish. I am a physical board certified sports uh, specialist working at uh, uh, Detroit Medical Center. It's in Michigan, Detroit. Um, um, like uh, uh, everywhere else in the world, we are also under lock lockdown. Up until uh, last week, uh, Michigan was the third highest in the United States in COVID-19 patients. Our, uh, unfortunately, our death rate is the highest, I think, in the world, 9%, mostly happening in uh, uh, nursing homes and older, uh, older folks with, uh, obviously, multiple uh, health conditions. Anyway, uh, here at uh, Detroit, I know many of my colleagues, I mean, not colleagues, my friends, PTs, had contacted this virus and everybody is fine. If we are healthy, uh, virus is not uh, too, too harmful for you. There's no need to panic if you are healthy. It will just uh, come and go as a normal flu. Anyway, we are not here to talk about COVID-19. We are here about uh, uh, to talk about blood flow restriction therapy. It is a form of treatment that originated in Japan in the late 1980s and 1990s, which was introduced to United States military physical therapists in the early 2000s. They did uh, a lot of research in this area. Initially, they uh, did most of their researches on um, veteran um, people with uh, salvaged limbs, meaning people after, um, coming back from Iraq Iraq war. They uh, because of the landmine and kind of blast they had over there. There were a lot of amputees. They initially started using um, blood flow restriction for them as a uh, analgesic, a pain uh, pain uh, killer. Uh, later on, they found out several uh, um, applications for this um, uh, unique treatment. Uh, blood flow restriction is, um, you know, you are occluding or restricting blood blood flow to a limb. You got to be very, very careful in those kind of situations. Uh, we at our clinic uses a Delphi system that I will show you in a minute. That is the only FDA approved uh, device that we have because it is calibrated to, um, uh, to uh, personalized uh, occlusion pressure. What is personalized blood flow restriction? It is. It is a specialized tourniquet system to decrease uh, vascular inflow and occlude venous outflow. Normally, what we do here is um, put a put a tourniquet around the proximal aspect of the limb to uh, occlude 100% venous outflow and restrict vascular inflow. Uh, researchers have shown that most effective treatment or most safe and effective treatment is achieved by 80% occlusion in the lower extremity and about 50% of occlusion in the upper extremity. So there are several benefits of using a BFR. As you all know, if to achieve hypertrophy, we need we need to use high intensity training. If you have worked with uh, anybody after surgeries or um, people with um, um, weight bearing restrictions, or people with uh, after surgery or um, immediately after injury, like an ACL injury, uh, patient cannot walk immediately after surgery, there may be some restriction depending on what kind of repair or risk reconstruction they had. If there's a meniscal repair involved in along with it, we usually have a non period of um, non-weight bearing or a partial weight bearing condition. At that time, 
inter the training exercises or high, uh, any kind of exercise is uh, very calibrated at that time. We have to be very careful not to uh, cause any damage to the um, graft, the ACL graft. We'll come and uh, we'll talk about um, those in detail uh, later. Uh, so I built more of your physical therapy students and some are uh, physiology students. You, most of you are aware or know that um, there are the in, in developing strength and hypertrophy, there are basically three um, models um, they came up with. Mechanical tension model, metabolite accumulation model, and cell swelling model. We will go through each of these models and how BFR, um, blood flow restriction therapy, assists in strength and hypertrophy. So mechanical tension model. Uh, mechanical stress records uh, high order motor neurons and inside cells uh, inside satellite cells to proliferate and fuse to existing um, muscle fiber. The satellite cells are nothing but a precursor um, myo myocyte in, in available in, in the models. Though they are very important in um, uh, mu mu muscle synthesis, uh, myoprotein synthesis. To obtain substantial hypertrophy from a resistant uh, resistance training program, the target muscles should be subjected to substantially increased loads. That is your principle of hyper, uh, uh, high intensity training. To achieve hypertrophy, we have to do our um, exercise in, uh, above a 70% of repetition maximum that is high intensity training well, how does bfr help there bfr is known to show and to activate mtorc pathway mammalian target of rapamycin complex we will discuss that a little later in in, in a um in a different slide when we talk about uh, the metabolic effects the mTORC pathway is usually uh, augmented with high intensity training. BFR, the low load can show the similar effect. I will explain that again later. So with, uh, you know, with high intensity training, you know your muscles get sore from lactate accumulation and muscle um, breakdown. And with BFR, because we are losing, using decreased load, like 20% most often, or 30% of the repetition maximum, we do not get a delayed onset of muscle soreness. Some researchers, uh, research, researchers have shown that with BFR, there is no direct or indirect uh, measures of uh, this domes causing creatine kinase or lipid um, uh, peroxidases. Protein balance depends on muscle protein synthesis and muscle protein breakdown. If it is in a positive, uh, if, if synthesis is positive, we get more uh, hypertrophy. Metabolic accumulation model. This is where BFR relies physiology on. When we occlude or uh, when we restrict blood flow to a certain muscle, the muscle works in a hypoxic environment. When we apply um, this tourniquet, in the first few uh, sets of exercise, the muscle uses the oxygen all in the blood and the, mu and the muscle tissues uh, using curb, uh, a curb cycle. You know that for curb cycles, you, you need um, oxygen to produce energy. Once that is ran out, the oxygen is ran out, it um, shifts to Cori cycle where, you, where it is an anaerobic uh, metabolism. When this happens, fast, switch, fast uh, switch muscle fibers and higher order motor neurons uh, contribute to the muscle um, force production. 
in this picture on the right hand side um, is uh, this is a simple depiction of Cori cycle. You know that Cori cycle uses glucose, splits glucose and gives out uh, um, you know, ATPs, two ATPs and uh, uh, byproducts are um, pyruvate and lactate. This lactate then goes back into the blood circulation and reaches the now uh, liver and for um, you know gluconeogenesis. We may uh, make it back to uh, and and store as glucose in the liver. However, we have occluded uh, the venous outflow the lactate cannot escape so there is an accumulation of this metabolite in that muscle region that that active the accumulation of lactate and uh, hydrogen ions activate or stimulate group 3 and 4 afferent to activate, activate pituitary glands to increase release of growth hormone Growth hormone, as you know, at any age in your life, is involved in recovery and collagen synthesis. It also activates um, the growth hormone dash, activates insulin-like growth hormone factor one and satellite cells. The satellite cells fuse into the existing muscle cells uh, and, and it is usually it usually is used for repair and growth of this uh, muscle fiber. Meaning with uh, usually with high intensity training, there is muscle breakdown. At that time, through this activation of growth hormone and mTOR spark pathways, the satellite cells are mobilized. They fuse to the myocyte, existing myocytes, and form. Uh, in a, a thicker, more uh, thick, thicker myocyte, and it also helps in uh, repair and growth. The mTORC pathway, mammalian target of rapamycin complex. It is the signaling pathway for muscle protein synthesis. Taking muscle to failure activates this mTORC pathway. In and if adequate protein supply exists, the muscle protein synthesis will be enhanced. Meaning after a high intensity training, people are advised to take a high protein diet. This is the reason, because if after the, after the high intensity training, the, 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 this, this particular pathway is activated, my mTORC pathway, and if there is supply of protein, the muscle can um, rebuild and cause, um, you know, it can, it can cause hypertrophy. This is a depiction, a simple depiction of self proliferation and growth. You know, how the um, insulin like growth hormone and mTORC pathways, uh, with the help of mitochondria. Uh, and so, with BFR, Metabolic accumulation is um, utilized to its maximum. Usually, like I mentioned about uh, earlier, with high intensity training, um, there is metabolic and accumulation. High intensity training is um, doing exercises with 80 or 70 or 80 percent repetition maximum. Those are very high. Uh, intensity exercises. We can only do so many high intensity exercises. BFR relies heavily on metabolic accumulation theory to promote strength and uh, enhance hypertension, hypertrophy. With, uh, like I mentioned, with BFR, a patient is, or, or any individual can do, can do only 20% of repetition maximum because there's no oxygen available, they cannot do any higher anyways. This application of this BFR, the occlusion, or I keep saying occlusion, it is a, a restriction of alt, um, um, blood circulation. Uh, the Cori cycle is activated. 
meaning it enhances um, um, the metabolic accumulation. There are researchers to, uh, to evidence that PFR with low, do low load exercise can in, uh, increase mus uh, uh, EMG activity. The reduction in oxygen and subsequent metabolic accumulation during BFR increases fiber recruitment through stimulation of the group three and four afferents. It also inhi uh, inhibits alpha moron neuron. neuron. Oxygen is weaned off. Muscles still need to produce the same amount of uh, force. So to to prevent a conduction failure, the muscle uh, muscle kind of activates other nerve nerve endings to uh, contribute muscle fibers around that uh, working muscle, meaning it activates fast twitch uh, oxidant and aerobic uh, fibers. Now the third model is self swell model. Self swelling increases protein synthesis and suppresses assess proteolysis. With BFR, when the cuff is applied, the blood, if, if in case of the lower extremity, 20% blood circle, um, um, arterial blood is flowing, but 100% uh, uh, venous blood is occluded. So there is an accumulation of in the cells. There are evidence that the muscle swelling can, um, pro um, can increase the um, protein synthesis. I think of uh, it as a balloon. If you fill the water with water with balloon, uh, I mean, sorry, you fill the uh, balloon with water. It uh, the 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 material. Uh, reacts to reinforce the um, reinforce itself, meaning it has a tendency to fight itself to not to break. Muscle does the same thing. With BFR with uh, um, with no exercise, just application of BFR alone causes a plasma fluid shift to the muscle meaning the muscle cell enlarges. Avoid a breaking of the tissue, it in, uh, produces protective mechanism um, via protein uh, synthesis or muscle protein synthesis. So this particular um, model is very important as well to help with uh, patient who cannot do exercise, cannot do exercise at all. Like for example, they have tested in uh, older population to prevent sarcopenia. Um, in case of uh, a fracture uh, and severe pain, a comminative fracture with severe pain, or uh, let's take the example of ACL injury, the patient cannot move. Patient is in so much, as most of the cases, patient is in severe pain. They are not bearing any weight, unable to do any exercise, unable to activate the quadriceps. Just applying BFR on their limb for five minutes can reduce atrophy. It is through this self swelling um, theory. You know, the, so. Physiology of BFR coming back to um, the physiology. At rest, it, um, the BFR's effect is through cell swelling with aerobic exercise, cell swelling and mechanical tension. Remember, we are not, we are not introducing any uh, resistance in aerobic exercise. Some people, uh, some of uh, sometimes we just have the patient in the initial stages after. Uh, uh, surgery, we put them on a bike with, uh, with BFR on, and uh, they just do, um, and they just do um, aerobic exercises. In that case, 
there most of the muscle fibers are, are acting in uh, under aerobic condition itself like a, like the curb cycle and this can promote um, high, um, uh, hypertrophy in aerobic exercises without any resistance it, it still promotes hypertrophy and most um, but for uh, the BFR training is from resistance training. It utilizes all three of these theories, cell, cell, cell swelling, mechanical tension, and metabolite accumulation. In, in a simpler terms, BFR uh, utilizes several different uh, pathways to enhance muscle strength and hypertrophy with uh, less uh, load and uh, decreased um, time period. Most often we use this technique for eight, uh, eight minutes only. In eight minutes, they will feel like they have run a marathon. That's how uh, the exercise feels after um, be a part. And I have done it myself, uh, biking um, for 10 minutes with the BFR is like, I, like running a marathon. So um, personal, personalized blood flow restriction therapy is uh, getting popular in, among the sports teams in the United States. Uh, uh, maybe uh, started about 10 years ago with uh, baseball uh, players and American football players. Uh, and hockey players, American hockey is ice hockey. They use uh, utilize blood flow restriction therapy uh, uh, a lot. So there are many generic ones available out there. If you Google um, blood flow restriction bands, there are simple, you know, uh, thin rubber bands or uh, tourniquets available online. But uh, when you are dealing with patients, somebody's limbs, we have to be very careful. We have, we have to be very measured in our approach. Um, Lenecke is one of the leading scientists uh, uh, in BFR technology in the United States. Uh, along with uh, Lenecke and Johnny Owens, the PT who was working with the military in the Uni United States of America, they came up with this device they, which can calibrate um, the limb personalized, personalized limb occlusion pressure. I am not a proponent of this company, nor I am uh, authorized to speak about this um, um, technology. I am just sharing my knowledge as I know as a clinical um, um, physical therapist. I, I am not a teacher. I have zero academic um, or commercial interest uh, in this presentation. Uh, I attended uh, a course, a training program from uh, the Owens Recovery Science uh, um, Company uh, through my work. And this presentation was put together from their manual for that training for um, a training session. Uh, that's my, you know, disclaimer. I'm not a proponent of this device or nor am I a proponent of this technique. I'm just sharing my clinical uh, experience with this uh, patients. Uh, I, when I was attending this lecture itself, I was very intrigued um, the depth of physiology this um, uh, device utilizes. Uh, when it comes to evidence, we know in physical therapy, we rely on evidence-based medicine, but very few uh, uh, real scientific evidence um, that are out there. Uh, this I thought uh, they had uh, very many published um, uh, literatures behind this uh, on you know Journal of Physiology and American Sports uh, uh, Journals. There and and with my personal clinical experience, I see this a lot. Some people do not tolerate this very well. 
um, when it comes to um, sports uh, injuries, athletes and they are very competitive. They want to get some place in, with their work, all the work they put into it. It is devastating for them to um, sprain their ankle or uh, rupture their um, ACL or even uh, sprain their hamstring, any of that. Um, I have seen it personally, um, like you, for, for the uh, soon after the uh, ACL reconstruction. If you have worked with patients, you know how difficult is it to um, get the um, quadriceps activated again, even as simple as a, uh, a total knee uh, arthroplasty, the quadriceps just dies off. It, 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 we have to use our manual techniques, the muscles, the stimulation, uh, everything to get those muscles back firing. But I uh, when, once I started using um, blood flow restriction therapy, the result was immediate. Like I said, I utilize cell um, swelling techniques too um, for this. Just applying the tourniquet itself for five minutes and then uh, deflating it. And then asking the patient to do an isometric quad. I can, uh, and the patient needs a good feedback for the patient too, to see the muscle just jumping back up. You just and I see if it just woke up from a deep sleep. It is a neat technique that I love to use, and the patient uh, feels that um, feel, feels the pressure and the tension in the muscle, uh, like uh, they did a marathon or they did a high intensity training, but without the pain associated with it. So. I will uh, uh, show you the device. I have it with me. I brought it from my clinic. Um, these are the tunicates, much uh, similar to what they use uh, in the uh, OR, operation room. Uh, this, this right here is for a smaller limb, a smaller um, lower extremity. Or some, some cases like in American football, if you have, have ever had a chance to watch American football, these guys are big. I'm talking big, meaning I have a patient now who has a ankle uh, sprain. He's only 15 years old. He is uh, 384 pounds. That's a huge guy. And he's 6'4". 6, 4, and 384 pounds at the age of uh, 15. So that is not going to work for him. So uh, we we'll use a larger one. As someone like him, if he has an injury in the upper limb, we may have to use uh, uh, you know, the green one, which is used for a normal uh, lower extremity. And uh, here is the one normally used for upper extremity, the smaller one. And here is the device. So it calibrates itself. This is the only FDA approved device that we have now. Because that is the only approved device, they price it accordingly also because they, yeah, they, are, they have no competition at this point. So I don't know if you can see this clearly. This is a, um, a device, but it is a handheld device, but it is a little heavy for the kind of uh, uh, complexity inside this device. This, uh, we, um, we apply the tourniquet to a patient's limb, very snug, very tight. And uh, with the help of this hose, we are connect the device to the um, tourniquet and we check the limb occlusion pressure because it is not connected to the limb it is showing error measures the limb occlusion pressure it um, uh, calibrates uh, automatically for 80 per we can uh, set uh, uh, set this uh, measurements too uh, 
uh, it will be a cool thing to show um, in person uh, and feel it for yourself, but we don't have that kind of opportunity right now. The protocol to use this device is calibrate personalized limb occlusion pressure that I just uh, mentioned you, to you. And I also mentioned that 80% occlusion in the lower extremity, 50% in the upper extremity. I have the patient uh, using it on a, on a, new, uh, on a bike, new step uh, and in the, in the rec in the, uh, recommend bike or uh, have them do squats. This uh, for everything we rely on evidence these days. So most evidence is at 30, uh, 30 reps uh, and, and 30 second rest and three sets of uh, 15 reps with 30 seconds rest in between each set. There, there are not too many uh, exercises, but the patient feels like a lot of workout. The first set is 30 reps because we are use, you, you, using up all the oxygen in that muscle. By the next three uh, sets, we, do, we are uh, working in a hypoxic environment. Cuff remains inflated throughout the treatment period. And if you are doing more than one set of exercises, we are deflating on the um, um, uh, tourniquet for a minute. Very few people can continue with the first uh, set of exercises. So it is on, only in a competitive level that we do that uh, continuous training. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, there are several applications in physical therapy for blood flow restriction. Am I running too late? No, I will we'll conclude it in a few seconds here. Um, skeletal muscle hypertrophy, endurance capacity, and muscle power, maximum muscle power and balance and mobility. There are, there are researchers out there that it helps uh, with all of this, um, in, in decreasing hypertrophy, inhibits uh, fibrosis in muscle. Um, I have personal experience in this, um, the, even though there, are, there isn't any evidence. I had a patient with uh, a hamstring strain. With any kind of strain, there is, uh, you know, scar tissue formation um, with um, uh, instrument-assisted uh, soft tissue manipulation and BFR. Uh, the treatment was quicker. My patient was in the recovery path of recovery uh, much earlier than anticipated. anticipated. Um, it causes neural ad adaptations, you know, quicker, ad um, quicker adaptation to, um, you know, utilize um, more neurons. It has uh, analgesic effects. Um, you know, if you or anybody is interested in um, additional um, yes, research, um, there you can go ahead uh, and do those research. But you have to have a uh, uh, you know approved, uh, clinically proven device to do those kind of research. So, uh, like I mentioned before, mTORC pathway requires protein availability. This is the recommended uh, protein intake after. Uh, uh, high intensity training. It tr holds true for BFR training as well. 20 grams of protein every four hours for 24 uh, hours, except while sleeping. That's for young, healthy uh, males. That is a lot of protein. Uh, in older, uh, because of uh, metabolic, um, in metabolism, dif difference in metabolism, older in individual has to ha consume more uh, uh, protein. So additional consideration, uh, myostatin, in, uh, myostatin inhibition, uh, neuroadaptation, we already talked. Uh, these are uh, area currently being uh, under investigation. Myostatin, if you know, is a, a element or a pro type of protein in the muscle. If you take knock that off, uh, the we have a huge uh, benefit in hypertrophy. This was first seen in uh, bison, meaning um, a big um, uh, bison 
Belgian bison. It's a very muscular. And uh, it was evidence that lack of myostat in, in the muscle protein was the one cause of its uh, uh, bulkiness. As with everything, we have several contraindications. We do not use it on uh, open injury or uh, severe hypertension people, vascular grafting. Um, if there is an ex uh, infection, open fracture, uh, if we, there is an intracranial pressure, you know, that is pretty common sense here. We are uh, uh, restriction blood flow. There is a lot of load on your. Um, 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 Part, there will be um, backflow retention. This uh, we have to take in, take um, into consideration the um, uh, load on the uh, kidney, lungs, uh, heart, all those uh, uh, areas. Now, I will uh, leave it for. I have to stop sharing to see the questions. I guess. No, we, we, we can, uh, I'm, I'll uh, moderate in that. Uh, thank you for the wonderful session, Adisha. Uh, we, am I audible? Yes, you are. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we, we have had some questions and uh, we would, I would take it one by one. Uh, there is a question from Ms. Sagarika that uh, what should be the minimum pressure while applying the tonic? Which, what does the recent evidence suggest? Like I mentioned, maybe she was she had asked this question earlier in the presentation. Um, the you know we don't uh, use a blood pressure cuff to uh, calibrate that. Um, every it is in it it depends on individual to individual. It also um, uh, it also depends on uh, the size the heart conditions, the vascularity, the muscle content, the, you know, it has various aspects of it, if you understand. Um, and that's why uh, the, you know, device, such a device, because it automatically calculates for us. Put this, uh, strap it on and put the, put, put the uh, press, press this button and it calculates uh, the blood, uh, uh, you know, the total pressure. Uh, to occlude the uh, blood completely in an average male, say it is uh, 100 and, uh, 230, um, you know, average uh, female, it may be a little less. It depends, it, it, it is individual to individual, and we do not have to worry about if you're using the right uh, equipment. Okay, so is it is it also dependent on uh, previous training and uh, the level of fitness person has? No, if, if when we are applying this tourniquet, it is apply. It is always individualized because you know, uh, it, like I said, we can use this on any person, not just athletes. Uh, an older lady with a knee replacement who has difficulty, uh, you know, facilitating facilitating that uh, quad disrupts in the first few uh, you know minutes of the treatment session. We can apply this and, uh, you know, things like that. Was that your question? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next question is from an NPT student and okay. uh, the, she is Roshni Sharma. She has, she has asked uh, what should be, uh, in which phase of uh, injury management or rehab should this technique uh, be used? Okay. Uh, good question. Say, um, um, I, didn't, I, I didn't get her name anyways. Uh, this is, at this point, uh, we use it even before the surgery. Um, like for example, ACL injury, the patient is non-weight bearing until, after, until the surgery. Immediately after um, an ACL injury or any kind of injury, the, the, uh, there is inflammation, there's swelling, there is uh, a lot of damage to the tissue and the person. So at that point, we do not do uh, any surgery. We wait uh, the, for the um, inflammation to settle down, the swelling to go down, to perform any surgery that period. 
or two or three weeks time, we can I use the BFR uh, to, um, uh, to to prevent atrophy in that in muscles. Okay. I also yeah, want to mention here. I also yeah. want to mention here there has been evidence that uh, applying BFR in the proximum uh, uh, area in a limb can have uh, effect on the other limb, uh, other limb like a cross education, and also the proximal to that um, um, BFR cuff. In case of, uh, especially in case of a rotator cuff uh, injury, rotator cuff rehab, we use this uh, cuff on the, um, you know, obviously on the arm. I put it on the neck uh, uh, to restrict blood flow. So that has evidence that it promotes healing, and uh, the beauty of it is all, you know, you can have weight training early in the in the rehab. Uh, any tendon that is healing, any muscle that is healing can take 20% of repetition maximum. Uh, normally, you would have to wait till the uh, second or third phase of the rehab to uh, use that kind of uh, uh, intensity. Yes, go ahead. Right, right. right. So, uh, the next question, uh, I can see, I, I think most people must be typing some questions, but uh, those all we have typed. Uh, uh, and does this uh, take application of this technique? Uh, is there any special consideration for anybody with varicose pain? Is there any modification? If it is inflamed, inflamed, uh, we do not do that. You know, uh, um, earlier in my career, um, meaning I was many years ago when I was in uh, grad school, I, what I learned was primum non nocere, right? Above all, do no harm. Do no harm. Yeah, correct. Right? Uh, if you have, if you are in doubt, don't do it. Yeah. So uh, the next question we have is from Dr. Anu. She is uh, she is asking if are there any complications after its usage? Uh, we have. You have experienced. Any, we haven't seen any. We are uh, with the patient all the time when you utilize this. If they are, I know. First of all, they had to be. They have to be hydrated. You know, we are uh, occluding their limb. They have to be hydrated. They have to, uh, uh, and we patient has to be in generally healthy condition, except for this. Except for this uh, injury, uh, we haven't had any complications. Okay. We we use this on amputees. We use this on complex uh, complex complex cases. So. Yeah, we are right there looking at the, uh, you know, we, we are watching the limb, we are, uh, you know, we, we are watching the patient to see any, any problems. Right. And uh, soon after we uh, uh, take the pressure off, in a minute, uh, you know, the limb, limb is back, back to normal. Uh, uh, I have some, uh, one another question by Dr. Jayaprakash. Uh, he has asked if uh, there is any uh, any uh, any way where it can be used in case of fistula in a dialysis patient. Can uh, it no, be used? I wouldn't, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't use that. Okay. Again, again um, dialysis patient. The, you know, when you are occluding, especially a large uh, extremity like a limb, for so much time. Uh, there is a backflow, right? There is um, increased blood flow. I mean, the blood, the heart is doing the same kind of job, and the amount of blood is the same in in the blood in the body before this uh, in this uh, application. So there is pressure, increased pressure in the other parts of our body, especially uh, you know in kidney. Uh, we don't want that problem. I hope he has uh, his queries are solved. Um, uh, I, in my personal note, I would just wanted to know what uh, age group uh, have you, which is the age group you restrict uh, this uh, technique to be applied to? You do okay. not, uh, you proceed with very cautious, uh, cautiously or you double check. I wouldn't uh, use it on, uh, in, a, in pediatrics, okay, I wouldn't use this on pediatrics, uh, okay. frail, frail uh, elderly. 
Other than that, okay. any healthy adult is okay. It's okay. Okay. So it's safe otherwise. It's, uh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh,